Yes. Hello. You got it figured out. Hello. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we managed to do it. I'm good. How are you this I'm morning? Good. Um, better. Better. Good, good. Yes. Um, I mean, we'll we'll talk about some of the circumstances of um, Christia's <laughs> past weeks in a little bit, but um, I would love for you to just kind of uh, introduce yourself first and foremost, give people a little bit of an idea of who you are, yeah, where you are, so and I'm what Christia you do. Rocco, a, lot of call, a lot of my friends and clients call me chat. Um, I am a nutrition coach and my uh, I, I specialize in postpartum fitness. So most of my clients are postpartum moms, um, six weeks, as early as six weeks postpartum until way beyond. Like I have like clients who are already like 10 years postpartum. So yeah, I stick with my mom tribe. <laughs> awesome. I think it's such a cool uh, niche to get into. And um, of course, I'm interested, or maybe you want to tell us to how you yeah you got into this niche or what made you want to get into this niche because i'm um, obviously it it, it likely yes. means that you have kids yourself as i know um but what made you want to choose or pursue okay, this so particular i really niche? had a hard time well before i even gave birth or ha even had my children i really had a hard time um sustaining the weight loss so it's always about the weight for me, um, even before having kids. And I was always either binging or dieting. That's my history. Um, there was never a point of like sustainability, maintenance, just like not dieting for me. So that was exacerbated um, after I had my children. I really had ba bad body image issues, um, especially like, you know, pregnancy is such a, it's a it's a bittersweet. I will say it's a bittersweet time. It's sweet because you have a ch you have a new baby, and that's something that not a lot of women get to enjoy, right? Um, it's a privilege. It's not a right. It's a privilege. I feel, but it also comes at the expense of my our own bodies, especially if you are breastfeeding. Especially, you feel trapped. You feel trapped. Um, um, you feel so tied to your child because your nutrition is so dependent. I mean, the, the, the baby survival is so dependent on your, on you. Mm. So after having my first child, it took me like eight months after I started, you know, moving again, because I was so uh, scared that it would risk my milk supply. They would always say, you cannot diet, you have to eat, etc. But then there were so many people who were also saying that you just need to breastfeed and you're going to lose that weight off. And that was not, that was that was not the case for me. Breastfeeding made me balloon because I was always hungry all the time. And so um, after having, so uh, after my first child, I got, I got into keto. I, kind of, I got into all the fat diets, the easy, the, the more restrictive, <laughs> the faster the weight loss. And yet there again, I wouldn't be able to sustain it. Um, and it was always messing with my head. I always was asking my myself is this it for me is this life really it for me like mm -hmm. am I really not allowed to eat my cake and enjoy it that was like my my most because I love food I really <laughs> love food and so after uh, I got pregnant with my second and then the body image issues um after my second was worse than my first so it was like okay um uh I tried to do it on my own etc and then um, one year I started that, I started hearing macros. I started hearing macro counting. Um, and there were so many people on Instagram who were, who were doing it and they were eating so much. I'm like, how can they do this, etc. And then, um, I got into, I joined a group, uh, a group coaching program. Um, and we were all together starting macro counting and it was like amazing because I realized that I was under eating in so long. Um, even mm -hmm. at at calories or macros that I should be at a fat at active fat loss phase, I was still eating so much. And I remember my my um, sister; she was saying, "You're not gonna lose weight with that approach because you're eating so much." Like she saw how much I was eating, but it was within my macros. And then I told myself I was scared. I was scared that I was actually gonna the, um, gain more weight. And then I told myself I will take the risk. 
if this is one, if this, I will take one month, try this approach, take the risk, and this might be, you know, the thing that will get me off the hamster wheel. And it did. After one month, we took progress photos and measurements, and I'm like so blown away by the changes that I saw in one month, and I realized this is something that my Filipino moms will benefit so much from. I am a representative oh, of I that big population that have been under eating in so long and feel like this is it for me. And there is another way, there is an alternative to this, right? So I'm like, okay, um, I, I, was, I was following more people on Instagram, nutrition coaches, and et cetera. And then I got stuck at a place where like, I don't know where I'm going. I was in a, an active fat loss phase. I don't know where I'm going. And, and I was listening to a lot of podcasts and um, I learned off reverse dieting. So I did it myself, but I overshot it. <laughs> I overshot it. Um, yes. I was doing it very aggressively. So, uh, well, first time, beginners, <laughs> beginners. <laughs> that was like a newbie. Um, that's a noob for me. So, um and then eventually I got, I learned of nutrition coaches doing it. And I'm like, okay, I need to get a nutrition coach. And I got you. So you're, you're, you're actually my nutrition coach. Um, <laughs> and when Lisa came into my life, Lisa changed my life. Um, I will always say it to her that yeah. um, a lot of what I do now and a lot of what I learn, a lot of what I pass on came from Lisa. I will say that I'm at a better headspace. I'm at a better you know, I am a better mom. I am a bread, better person because I know my body well. I was just talking to my husband yesterday that I'm so in tune with my body now that I, I don't need a calendar, like a menstrual calendar, to tell me if I'm um, fertile, if I'm ovulating, or if like I've, yeah. I'm done with ovulation and I'm officially in my luteal phase. Like I can feel it in my body and it's always in sync. I love always it. Always in sync. And I don't know a lot of people who can definitely see that. And I, and I only think That's that only comes true. from the experience that you taught me and that nutrition, if you do it holistically, it's not just like calories in, calories out. Like you really listen to what your body is saying. You will benefit so much from it, not just from like the perspective of getting leaner or like body size. It's really like, it's knowing your side, yourself from the inside. And so that's how I got into this. I love that. That's how I'm so passionate at this because so many women need a lot of help and so many moms need, will benefit so much from yes. this kind of knowledge. And it's not even a product-based knowledge, right? It's like you're just teaching them Absolutely. what should have been taught to us. Right? It's like the science. Yes. <laughs> well, and kind of like, um, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, so many great things in regards to how you got there, why you are so passionate about it all. But also, I love just hearing how in tune with your body you're feeling. And that is really, I, I always almost feel like it's coming, yes. it's like feels like coming home when you return back to yourself because it's just you're you feel aligned you feel like you're yourself you're the most true version of yourself and that's that's the most beautiful way to to look at it and I love that you're spreading this message with um your coaching with your your postpartum course in particular and I think um as you mentioned or you mentioned one really important thing too that it's it's a bittersweet time most likely I obviously don't have a reference to this as I'm not a mom but I mean just from what I hear as well because you're sharing your body essentially with another human being and afterwards your body is yeah. not the body anymore that it was before and so it's hard to kind of reconcile or learn mm -hmm. uh, get to know that new body better oftentimes yes. we probably wish the old body yes. back but it's never going to come back again it's gonna it's different it's a different body so you can't think of that but of yes. course we always have those memories I could imagine um, and so I guess, is that one of the things that you focus on a lot with your clients in the sense of um, yes, learning yes. to love your so, body again? Um, I run a group coaching program, especially for postpartum moms, um, uh, six weeks to 15 months postpartum, and we call it your postpartum body. 
And um, the first module is about mindset, that instead of thinking bouncing back, so this is something I'm sure you hear it a lot, bouncing back to my pre-pregnancy body. I don't frame it that way. We use bouncing forward to their best mom body oh, because it. it's never going to be the same. Mm -hmm. um, even if you try so hard at dieting, even if you do all the other things, you know, whatever there is out there, it's never going to be the same. It's never going to look the same. It's never going to function the same. And it, but it doesn't mean that you're stuck at a body that you don't like. You can mold it. You can, yeah. you can make it your best mom body. It doesn't mean that mom body is like, you know, loose belly, whatever. No, you can make it the best body that you can have as a mom that um, honors your life stage, that honors your, your, the needs, your needs, your family's needs, and will continue to thrive. So not just survive, thrive at the place of um, less restrictions. Re thrive yes. at abund abundance. Yes. I always say that, that you need to learn how to thrive at, 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 from a place of abundance because if it's always going to thrive at less and less calories, less and less of everything for you, you're going to reduce yourself to just this when you could be experiencing life at this. Yes. So that's, uh, that's exactly, I think, yes. yes. We don't so that's, just want to get game changer by. For the moms that I work with, because all this time they think like, I need to get back to my pre-pregnancy body or else that's it for me. And then they don't realize that you can actually have a much better body than your pre-pregnancy body, but you just have to let yes. go of that idea that you need to go back. There's no going back anymore. It's, a, it's definitely a big yeah. mindset shift, yes. One of the questions we had for this live was actually, how do you find the balance between wanting to improve your body, but also accepting your body as it is, um, as it is as a post-pregnancy kind of body and um, do you find that it is something uh, that you personally or your clients are struggling with also like in the sense of definitely always wanting to get better but then realizing it is not going to be a hundred percent again or it's not going to be um you know, yeah like so um yes a lot of uh, a lot of the women that i work with struggle with this i used to struggle with this but it's come to the point that You have, I, I, I always ask my moms, you want to go in a calorie deficit, but it's going to risk your milk supply. So it's, a, it's just a, it's, that, it's, a, it's that simple of a question. What is more important for you right now? Yes. This, feeding your yeah, body, exactly. I mean, feeding your baby, but we can do it in such a way that it's not, you're not piling on unnecessary pounds or you we mm. go the aggressive route what you want but then it's at the expense of this because yeah. everything that we're pursuing it's always going to come at the cost of something right there's always going to be a trade-off yeah and so for these moms it's always i think it's always a matter of knowing what is the trade-off to the goal that you are trying to pursue and what is also mm -hmm. in the other side mm -hmm. in the converse what is the um, something that you are willing to sacrifice at the cost of it because there's going to be something that you need to do and there's also something that you will sacrifice right absolutely yes yeah whether that is you know your family meals or the time that you need to set aside for activity or whatever it is um, in regards to body image or body in general, we also had the question, and, and this might be a little bit specific, I don't know if that's something that you get into, but we had the question of um, stretch marks from pregnancy and how to, well, either get rid of them or how to, you know, learn to love them more. Yeah, Do you have any advice so for that? I have stretch marks. I have not met any of my ladies who do not have stretch marks. And so it's very normal to have stretch marks. Mm -hmm. I, instead of thinking it as something like, uh, like, you know, it's a, it's a vanity thing. I think of it as a badge of honor. Stretch marks means you grew, mm -hmm. you grew a life. And then that means that life mm -hmm. is thriving outside your body already. And so if you think of it, it's always a mind. It's, I think yeah. it's always 
the precision of language, the precision of words that we use, because it makes a whole difference in terms of us absorbing it in our head. Like the, the, just, the, the, just the change in usage of, instead of you, um, thinking of it as stretch marks, think of it as a badge of honor. I went through pregnancy and now my baby <laughs> is here. She, he arrived safely. She's in my arms. But it doesn't mean that I, um, even if it's there forever, it doesn't mean that you will, uh, it's, it's ugly. You can make it the best stretch marks possible there, <laughs> right? Like even at my body, yes. I, I'm I'm very comfortable with my body already. And I have moms who have, you know, they're very comfortable with their bodies already and that they still have jet marks. But because they changed their mindset, my, their yes. mindset shift. I mean, they shifted their mind, mindset about it. And also that... I do think that um, some nutritional strategies probably, I mean, uh, help with that, like yes. the higher protein yes. content yes. in the diet. Nonetheless, you know, that helps the skin just become tighter and firmer. And um, of course, uh, also just making sure that maybe we can we can yeah. add some collagen if necessary or good like food just quality. generally but good like food to totally quality, I would it. say, is probably helpful even with like, that. Like even laser there hasn't been like a laser machine that yes. has that can really remove them. So it's more of like you can make it the best stretch marks, stretch marks you have, but yes. to totally say that I wish I didn't have it. It's not, mm -hmm. I think that's something that you'll have to come to terms with and just accept that that's part of the package. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I do. I, I do. I agree. I um, I do think that um, probably also yes. uh, physical activity Definitely. helps with the skin yes. tightening it back up. Um, my question to you, because you work with um, postpartum moms from as early as six yes. weeks postpartum, I think you were saying. Um, I mean, I assume that they have first yes. need to be cleared from a GP before yes. they can yes. exercise again. Um, but one of the main issues that I often hear yes. about is like pelvic floor issues and lifting well not just lifting of course first just you know walking body weight exercises but then as they progress later on in their mm -hmm, journey mm -hmm. heavier lifting do you have mm -hmm. any comments or experiences or yeah, advice so when it comes to that program that i run for postpartum moms i do it with a pelvic floor physiotherapist so that's why yeah oh, cool. so that's, wow, why, that's amazing um here in the philippines it isn't much yet um a uh, uh, a protocol that you need to be cleared by a pelvic floor physiotherapist. But I already know okay, from okay. You know, in the US that that's a big um, check checklist for them. So that's why I work with a US-based pelvic floor physiotherapist. So what she does is that um, she, deep, she dives deep into the physiological changes after giving birth and then she clears them off like they do DR, they have stasis recti assessment uh, and then they accomplish, um, you know, another questionnaire on that will determine if they have pelvic prolapse, other more complicated pelvic floor mm -hmm. issues before we start them on the movement side. And so it's, that's, that's uh, very, awesome. that's, uh, I really recommend seeing a pelvic floor physiotherapist before you do any, you know, especially front loading exercises like you know planks crunches stay away from it until you are cleared by a dr this is where regressing mm -hmm. to progress is very important it doesn't mean that like you can't you yeah. can't just think that you are you can work out like your pre-pregnancy self this is a different body altogether and you need to honor the the timing the the progression and to take it slower this time yeah Yes. Yeah, I can. I mean, I hear often, especially things like like jumping exercises as well, or even running. Yes, um, it can be an issue. But also things because I mean, uh, uh, I know mm -hmm. you are also into strength mm -hmm. training with heavier weights and um, particularly lifts mm -hmm. like let's say deadlift or squats or so. Do you ever experience or hear about um, more issues there? Or, or do you think um, simply focusing on and doing a lot of core strength? Yes, very important that, that you do diaphragmatic breathing. Very important you do diaphragmatic breathing as early as six weeks. Even um, moms, mm -hmm. as early as they gave birth, that's what I did to my, that's what I did 
uh, on my second child as soon as I got out of the hospital. And I'm like, can I try to feel my core? <laughs> it's like, can I feel it? So it's doing the mm-hmm. aphromatic breathing, like, just, you know, try not even trying to close it, but really just, can I feel it? Because I, in pregnancy, as, as, you know, as you progress and the latter part of your pregnancy, you won't actually feel it anymore. And then a lot of women, after they give birth, they don't realize that they don't feel it. They don't realize that, oh, I can, mm-hmm. I don't have some control over it. Like, I can't even, like, try to you know, when you do Kegels, when you try to hold it in, I can't, I can't do it. And so that, that just general knowledge of like, do you have some sense of connection to your core? Do you, can you feel the bottom? Can you feel your pelvic floor? Can you feel like, can you, do you have some sense of like control when you breathe? And so that knowledge Mm -hmm. of like, they all tie together because your core, your whole midsection holds your whole body in place. So if you start lifting heavy and your core is, is out of control, some parts will overcompensate and eventually that will lead to an injury because this isn't strong enough to yes. keep the whole body intact, right? I mean, the, the, the crazy thing is that not just with uh, moms or in postpartum situations, I've often heard of or even seen people that um, they can't, hold a blank plank for 30 seconds or um, a, a dead bug or something like that for 30 seconds, but they try to lift uh, double their body weight in a deadlift. And you just want to cry because of course that means, you know, they yes. only yank it with the yes. back and the leg muscles without any core stability. And of course, um, yeah, we want to make sure that those basics yes, are taken yes, yes. care so of for sure. We start with the aphromatic breathing. It starts with gentle, flow stretches. Um, you know, yeah, dead bug, um, a reverse dead bug, I mean, and then just basically trying to mm-hmm. learn, like, can I do certain movements? Can I not do certain movements? And then slowly work your way from there. It mm-hmm. doesn't mean that if I think for postpartum moms, what's more important is that you can actually feel you're getting stronger instead of like, I can lift five pounds. Yes. I can lift 10 pounds. It's more of like, can I lift my, can I carry my baby yeah. without feeling like my arms are going to break? Can I, mm. can I go on, you yes. know, my usual day-to-day activities with my baby and yet my arm, my back is feeling okay. So those yeah. things. Yeah, no, I love that. I think that that's really, really good advice and very applicable. And we have, I've had some other um, applicable or really like practical, I guess, rather questions. I'm going to read them off and there were quite a few um so it mostly pertains mm-hmm. to tracking macros and with your kids with older kids around Probably. let's say i mean your six kids are are they six and six and three exactly i mean per- perfect example here so she's asking so how do you go about raising your kids while being in a calorie deficit so i mean <laughs> you get crankier you have less energy um how do you like do you have any advice for that or, or is it just a okay. matter of powering through? I struggled with this early on, but then I realized you cannot be in a calorie deficit. You can be eating enough and focusing on getting stronger and you will achieve body recomposition. So that's number one. Do you really need to be in a calorie mm-hmm. deficit? And number two, if you are going to be in a calorie deficit, try to time it at a time where everything in your family is at a, you know, easier, like you can do it. And I don't know what's easier mm-hmm. for you. Do you want to be in a calorie deficit in the summer when the kids are out of school? Or do you want to be in a calorie deficit during school, school months where the kids will be in school and you have time for yourself? So mm-hmm. definitely that timing is everything, especially if you're a mom. Um, and then number two, uh, just make sure that you are trying to go about it in the most um not aggressive like you can be in a calorie deficit like 10 10 percent calorie deficit that's going to be so much easier than going at it for like 20 percent deficit 25 percent deficit right mm-hmm. um um you we have to consider the sustainability if you're always uh mm-hmm. hangry and you are uh snapping at your children even if you get the body that you like you will not feel well because you're always going to grapple with mom guilt. 
we're we're, we're talking about trade-offs again and you know what's what's yeah. important to you at yeah. the moment that that's for sure but yeah i mean of course so many things to consider like length of the cut or or severity of the cut that's definitely a good point but i love what you said about making sure that the situation mm -hmm. the timing is mm -hmm. most ideal anyway it's never going to be like super easy but most ideal you don't have to add any extra stress um another question was um how do you go about question or i don't know if you've had questions like this from your kids when they ask mom why don't you eat the same thing as us or it does that mean <laughs> what we're eating is bad if you're eating something different yeah. if you're eating less or if you're you know you might say oh no i'm not going to have yeah. this ice cream right now you know because it doesn't fit in my macros obviously they don't understand but like, okay so the thing that? is i eat the same things as my children um That's, uh, I think, that's why I'm at a better place is because I come from not eating the same things as my children and now we eat the same things. Like what is served on our table is the same, mm -hmm. it's the same meal that my kids will have, my husband will have, and it's just a matter of portion for me. But the most important thing is mm -hmm. you want to make sure that what you are eating is also the same, sort of like the same things as your children because you're setting a good example for them. When you're integrating more vegetables on the table, fruits, you're normalizing eating healthy, you're setting them up for success. Now, in terms of cheats, they can eat more cheats than I do. It's just a matter of portion. But me putting my, my a bag of chips, not eating it from a bag, but putting it on a small bowl, it also sets up a good precedent for them. Mm -hmm. Because now they know that that bag of chips, mm -hmm. it's not something that I eat. Yes, it's not something it's that I much. eat in one sitting. Yes. It's something that I can eat in a bowl and I can enjoy it the way it should be enjoyed mm -hmm. and not feel guilty about it. And so mm -hmm. it's, I know it really mm -hmm. comes in different seasons. Like if you're in the middle of a cut, you won't be able to have those sheets, etc. But the non-negotiable for us as a family is that there's always going to be vegetables. So let's say if you're in the middle of a cut and you have very limited carbs, then you can do the collie rice route. And it's still going to be very beneficial for the kids to see because like my daughter, she loves collie rice. When I was in the middle of a cut, she will eat my collie rice. And I'm like, wait, that's my collie rice. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not really a matter of a big disparity between what I eat and what they eat. It's just a matter of making sure that what I eat is also applicable to them so that they get Mm -hmm. to never they never get to the point like is this healthy or it's not healthy well as long as there's vegetables as long as it's a balanced beets you're okay awesome i like like that answer um the only other thing i guess that or what i have heard from other clients as well where they are like oh, i don't know if that sets a bad or unhealthy example to my um, children is um, mm -hmm. with the weighing out or with the tracking because of course it um, uh, it could come across especially as mm -hmm. kids or girls get older um, as like you know a little bit obsessive mm -hmm. why do you weigh everything out why why is that um, I guess the main thing is like how do you um, show them that um, it's not an food. unhealthy relationship my kids are so food. used to my weighing scale Like they, my, my daughter even would get it from like the cabinet and when it's meal time, she'll get it and like, <laughs> weigh your food, weigh your food. So it's part, she's so used to this, but also that I tell them that I'm, I, I'm, I'm weighing my food so that I know I'm getting enough food in. I have the 10. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a good way to spin it because uh, instead it. of telling her, Oh, I weigh my food in order to make sure I'm not eating too much. That can, that automatically yes. has a really negative connotation as opposed to saying I, that I make sure I'm getting enough of uh, of the right things or enough nutrients or you know however you can explain mm -hmm. it. Yeah, to, so I to always them. make sure that mommy needs to make sure I'm eating enough enough vegetables, enough fries, enough whatever of this. So it's like instead of them um, thinking that oh there is something that I can't get a lot of it's more like oh she needs to make sure that um everything is balanced for her so that's how i frame it mm -hmm. i like like that very very much the um the other thing that comes to mind is that i guess um especially in a weight loss phase or for a lot of clients and um, their protein intake 
mm-hmm. should be higher or is higher than mm-hmm. let's say mm-hmm. your kid's diet um have you ever had a question whether where they were like mom why are you drinking a protein <laughs> shake or why why yeah you know you know kids naturally or most people's tendency is more yes. towards carby snacks or crackers or whatever okay like how do so you the explain protein the shake, protein I always drink it with berries with fruits so it's always in a smoothie form mm-hmm. and my kids also drink smoothies so what basically happens is that when we <laughs> prepare when i prepare my protein smoothie after that i prepare their smoothie but it's just without the protein powder mm-hmm. so it's like it's it's yeah there yeah. isn't much of a struggle because what i that's why that whatever i eat that's also what they eat it sans some you know protein powder etc but for them instead of like getting protein powder i add um um greek yogurt for that added um protein so it's like mm-hmm. i also train them that this is your vegetables this is good for you and then i tell them that this is mommy's protein and then this is your protein so that's part of their routine already every afternoon we get that as okay, our protein yeah. part a snack yeah do you find that a lot of the clients that you start working with initially oh, struggle yes. to get enough Definitely. protein in? i don't have i actually don't know anyone at least in my client uh roster who at the onset they got the protein uh really well none definitely none so um a lot of them struggle with oh my god this is so much they feel like this is so much and then i tell them mm-hmm. you're actually used to not eating enough this isn't so much this is just enough you are not yeah. used to eating this the enough amount And the protein is just is like especially be for breastfeeding protein. moms. Oh my gosh, I think it's yes, one of so the game changers. Want, like, um, fish. Since we, uh, our country is an mm-hmm. archipelago, we're surrounded by water. It's easy for us to get fresh fish. So for them, we want to prioritize yes. fish like salmon or like other kinds of fish because that's going to give that's going to make it uh, their milk supply better. And the quality of the milk supply, because omega three, mm-hmm. EPA, and DHA. So that's we 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 talk about that, and uh, yeah, in general, the protein thing is a struggle at the start, and then they realize, oh, it, you can get used to it, and then they feel it, like when they start eating more protein, and then yes. they start eating more vegetables, and the carb starts to get smaller because in our diet it's high carb and high fat, right? So when they prioritize on the protein and the fiber, they realize, oh my goodness, if this is how it feels to not be hungry. Mm-hmm. The, the, the feeling comes first. And I think often then after a few weeks or a couple of months, they yes. actually start craving protein. I love it when I get those messages at first when people are like, oh my gosh, I or was actually vegetables. craving my protein. And I'm What's like, oh yeah. yeah. When my clients tell me that, my uh after you know after the program ends they would message me that um my body is craving for vegetables and i'm like what a good mm. feeling when i start when they start craving because you know that when your body starts craving for vegetables you will want to keep it in this as, as your staple and that's yes. that's going to be so much easier yes. for you already your half the battle is done when you get the vegetables in yeah yes no, I, I love it. I, one of the things I have to say that um, I love about um, your Instagram, I mean, you're, you have so much like very informative um, information on there too. Later on, I'll get you to, to share your handle so people can go and follow you. Um, but I love that you share so many of your meals, like as simple as they are. Um, but I think it just sets a great example that you're, um, you know, even if you're being social, you're estimating most of the time. Um, sometimes you allow yourself, you know, um, untracked Always days mindful. here and there. But by now, as you say, you know your body so well and you can yes. compensate for it. And um, Or if it's a higher calorie day, you can, you listen to your hunger cues the next day. And so I think that that's really great. And what's really visible in your meals too is that, um, I don't know if that's just you or if that's um, quite practicable in the Philippines, but there is a yes. lot more fish and seafood, yes. it feels like to me, than in, you know, standard American cuisine yes. typically. Yes. So is we that a lot actually common? We have a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables here because we live in a tropical country. So although we can't get mm. a hold of like berries because they thrive in colder climates, we have a lot of like mangoes here. We have the best mangoes here. We have a lot mm-hmm. of 
um, fibrous vegetables here. That's not an issue. It's so cheap here because we can grow it easily here. Like I can definitely say that if you don't have like, let's say you're homeless, right? Go back to the province, get like, you know, go back to the rural, uh, to the, just your province. Um, you can set up a hut, you can plant your food. I mean, they can, mm -hmm. can plant and you're going to survive. There isn't an issue of like whether you mm. have enough food or here. Just make just as long as you have a place to like plant stuff, you can definitely survive. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I I I love that. I hope that that makes it easier for people to start enjoying um, uh, more fish or more more protein through fish again, and also of course vegetables and fruit. And um, the other thing that seems quite common is. Um, more yeah. good quality yeah. tofu or soy products which of course is great also in the sense of yeah, you know yeah, uh, so plant-based protein in the philippines uh we have this um uh, dish called taho taho is silken tofu with brown sugar and small boba so if you like drinking milk tea we have those um that's uh it's a snack it's a breakfast and a snack and it's being sold in the streets here like people call uh street vendors um, and so for the longest time before starting this journey, I thought that was, I can't have that because that's sugar. I don't know the macro composition of that meal until I realized, wait, 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 wait. This thing is tofu. This is high in protein. And I'm like, wait, this is just brown sugar. I can just, this is just carbs. This isn't really bad for me if I just control it properly. And like from then on every day, I would have that um, silken tofu for my breakfast. I love so much that macros yes. have given you the freedom yes. to eat the foods that you love and yes. the foods that are traditional in, in, yes. in your cuisine as well. I guess a little bit of the sad thing in, is sometimes too that, that unfortunately also um, quite a lot of fast food, I believe, is, is becoming or has become over the past, I don't know, a uh, few years, um, very, very popular. So that's probably Gravity. often what people have as go-tos i mean not just once a week unfortunately probably yes. but you know burgers and, and chips and stuff like that more and more yeah well an um honestly for me um since the world is starting to reopen again in this side of the country and in this side in our side um people are going back to work and then of course with people going back to work instant meals are going to be their go-to source right so yes it's normal that people mm -hmm. gravitate have more um, lean, they're more lenient on getting the fast food. But I always, and, and I always encourage my, the people that I work with that you can have like one food from, from let's say McDonald's or whatever, but you don't need to eat the whole burger and the fries and the soft drinks, right? Like you can, mm -hmm. like how I do it, I typically take off one bun just the uh, the burger, the meat, and I make sure that the burger is like not mm -hmm. even like fake burger. <laughs> it has to be like if I'm gonna eat a burger, it yes, has to be like yes. a good burger, right? So good the bun. Yes. I mean, sorry, the patty, and then one bun, and then um, I don't eat fries because I just I know that it's not it's not going to add to the meal. The meal in itself is a meal. That the burger mm -hmm. in itself is a meal. And then when I get home, I eat more vegetables because I know I lack vegetables for that mm -hmm. meal. So it's always... The, I like that, yes. And it's yes, going to help so much with satiation. Playing, like, yes. playing with it like a puzzle. If I had this, then that means I have more of this to compensate for this. And then eventually it will come together. And you will think that, okay, in this, in this, when I think about it this way, I got to have my burger although I didn't get to have my fries, but I still got to eat my burger. And that's more than enough. Because mm -hmm. from a place of, like from yeah. a history of dieting, not being able to have a burger is, and then all of a sudden being able to have a burger, enjoying it is a big thing for me. Uh, I, lo I love that you say that because so often I do still find that um, people, especially if they're, you know, trying to lose weight and then often they, they go out or they, see how their friends eat and I often hear oh, I just I wish I could eat um you know how I used to eat or I wish I could eat how they eat or I know somebody who can eat whatever they want and they look xyz and I just say again shifting your mindset to hey I can lose weight yes. while I'm eating a brownie yes 
that's pretty awesome. Not thinking of like, uh, why can't I lose weight while eating a whole box of brownies? And but thinking I'm so happy yeah. I can eat a little piece of brownie and still lose weight or yeah. or a burger and you know still lose weight or whatever instead of thinking oh I wish I had a burger and yes. and that milkshake yes. and the fries yes. and, yes. Da, 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 and always, so <laughs> all a grateful thank you like, um I always try to stay in my lane like I think that's what I, that's a game changer for me and that's why I've been you know I've been I've sustained this for two years already not not I mean not long enough but at least more than long enough from my other previous dieting experiences but I always say in my lane when when I say that I uh, what I mean is that I do not compare, don't compare with my previous. Mm -hmm. I try not to compare with other people how mm -hmm. they eat. I try not to compare with how I ate before. It is what it is. If this is a cutting phase, I've accepted that. Mm -hmm. I've accepted that I'm not gonna be. I'm going to be hungry. My choices will be limited. But I know that this is for a short period of time only. I just have to power through this, let's say, 12 weeks, 16 weeks. And then I can get out of it. I can enjoy more food. And that's why yep. it, I think what was also a game changer for me was when I, I could decide when to diet, when to cut my food, when to go on a cutting phase. Mm -hmm. Before, it was like a knee-jerk reaction. If I, binge the, if I binge the night before, tomorrow I'm going to diet hard. But now... It's more of like, wait, before I, got, I get into a calorie deficit, am I at a good place? Is this a good time for me? Can I handle yep. it? My, can I handle the next 12 weeks of this before I go, I do that knee-jerk reaction mm -hmm. of dieting? That I have control. I have a say at this. And that's been like, yes. It's, it's all conscious all, decisions. So it's like yes. all of a sudden, I have more power now. And that means because I have more power now, I have a sense of ownership to my food, my actions. Yeah. I love it. I, I really, really love it. And um, just generally, I'm so thankful for your time. I think there were a lot of um, amazing gems in here for uh, for people to listen to. And if you want to, to just to finish off, um, share your, your Instagram handle or website where people can find yeah, you. Yeah, so they can find me also. on Instagram. I'm just on Instagram. I hang out there. <laughs> Um, um, my, uh, my handle is nutrition by Chris. Yeah. Um, and then you said that you're so proud of me, but I'm, I just wanted to say that that means a lot because of course I learned so much from you when you, as I said earlier, you changed my life, everything that I'm starting to feel and joy back. Like, you know, that I feel like I'm thriving more than thriving in any phase of my pre-pregnancy life is because you gave me the freedom that you gave me the freedom of food back. Mm -hmm. And that's a big thing for me because for someone who likes to eat, for someone who has been dieting and so, you know, always swinging, swinging the pendulum in opposite and uh, um, in, in that side, it, this has brought so much life back to me and more than. So I'm very, ho I'm mm -hmm. very, I'm very thankful. Um, and if anyone just, you know, if they just keep at this, you know, whatever they're teaching, I'm sure like, your clients, I am your client, but for the, everyone who is watching this, you just need to like really live in the, in the teachings and what mm -hmm. it's like, 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 it's like Lisa tells you, this is the way how to offer, to think about it, etc. Try to do it instead of resist it, instead of try to fight it, try to, 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 to immerse yourself first and then see Give your, yourself time to, to, to live it and then see that it's really good. It's not being, not dieting, not, um, not uh, restricting and then not binging all the time. There's always going to be a middle ground. That's freedom in itself for me. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Christia. That honestly, I got goosebumps, and we I know that one day you. I will I, come and see you in the Philippines. I cannot wait. I will show you the beaches. <laughs> They're awesome here. I, I honestly, I can't wait. Um, yeah. So again, thank you for your time. It was lovely chatting with you face to face as well. And I hope you have a wonderful Friday thank and you. start Bye to your everyone. weekend. Bye, Gojina. Bye. Bye, bye. <laughs>